Oh, sure. Uh, my name is Sebastian Sintron. I'm 27 years old. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. I lived in the island until 2019, August 2019. I moved up here to uh, North Carolina. Been living up here ever since. Uh, on one side, it's the fact that I saw it as a historical event. I'd never been to a rally before. I'd never been to Washington to see old all the, line, the, the, the things that I would require for me to be able to do the trip lined up. So I took it. Aside from that, I voted for the guy. I, I would say it was for the most part my first time in just about any kind of political rallies. Because I've never really been a very politically active person. I, uh, it wasn't until about two years ago that I really started researching and doing my reading and whatnot. When I was in college, I was uh, a Bernie bro, as they say. I, I, actually, I tried to go watch him when he went back to Puerto Rico doing the primary against Hillary. That didn't work out. didn't get a, a chance to go that far. But anyways, yeah, this was the first time I go to just about any kind of rally, a Trump rally or rally in general. I had uh, read more about the legal side, uh, paid more attention to the court trials. Because yeah. rallies and stuff like that had never really been my thing. I'd never really cared a whole lot for that sort of thing. It wasn't really until that that I went to that one. That I dis that I figured it's it's about time we start being loud, not in the sense of like rowdy loud, but making yourself heard. Well, first and foremost, up to that point, you had multiple circumstances leading up to it. As I mentioned earlier, we had had the massive lockdowns across the nation, the the spread of this. How can I explain it? This uh, Marxist ideology called critical race theory and critical gender theory, this constant violence on the street, this beginning of what could theoretically lead up to hard censorship of the people. And as I, as I pointed out to someone, at that point there was a legal dispute between a couple of the states regarding the election and the electoral laws. They were split just about down the middle, and I pointed out to someone the last time tensions were this big were back when uh, James Buchanan was president and you were coming up to Lincoln. So I wanted to be there in case anything went down. The election, like in, even if the, the elections were certified, the elections were not certified, something crazy does happen, nothing at all happens, I wanted to be there. Dare I say, if you look at the historical context of President James Buchanan, especially, I think it's straight up in his wiki, the Wikipedia, it says a, uh, a weak president who became ill in the early stages of his presidency and had a vice president who essentially had to take over for him. Legally, he was nominated, so he is the president as of right now. If you're asking for my personal heart of hearts answer, I think there was, a, there was certainly foul play of some sort. I do not know to what extent. I believe that even if not outright cheating in the actual elections, if, even if you look at uh, the articles that the Times put out, it was uh, the secret cabal that saved the election. I don't know if you remember that one. Even to that, even if that is the case, and, and there was no actual rigging of the actual elections, there I say that to an extent was some kind of, trend of cheating. But that's just my personal opinion. We got up early in the morning, uh, headed on to uh, the Washington Monument area. I was there around 7, maybe, 6.37. It was fairly early. It was pretty early. Just like scattered groups tending around, little groups here, little groups there. One thing I saw that I think I mentioned to you was the, uh, you call him the shaman, right? Yeah. yeah the the yeah. guy with the horns. Yeah, I call him the Viking because that's when I, when I saw him. That's kind of like what it looked like to me. It was really early in the morning. I, that was like right around 948 according to the phone. He was just around the area amongst with other people. I talked to him for a little bit. I walked up to him because I thought he looked cool dressed like that. Like I said, a picture in my head like a Viking. I talked to him for a little bit. I said, yeah, I'm just here doing my thing, waving my flag and whatnot. I'm like, okay, man, more power to you. I went on my way. I bought a hat that I lost while I was over there. And then I spotted myself in front of the Washington Monument area. Because I, I, that's where I was told that in that era, that's where Trump would have, was going to come out a couple of hours later. So I wanted to see him. Yeah, I got past the security line. They checked me down. They patted me down, scanned me with, 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 I guess, like metal detectors. 
I went through this little thing and then I just walked on in. I got there just as Trump was coming on stage. I was there for a few minutes then my, I managed to get a hold of my group. And they told me, yeah, we were standing next to some guys holding a big purple cross. I looked over and I saw a big purple cross in the distance. So that's when I left the little central area to try to back into the street to head towards where they were, which was farther down on the, in front of the Washington Monument, just a little bit down yeah. the road. Trump was still talking over there. I was just trying to weave through the crowd, trying to make my way back to my group, which never managed to happen. I lost them again. So as I'm weaving my way to the other side of the crowd, Trump starts to wrap up. I couldn't quite hear anymore what he was saying because I was farther away. But uh, people were like, yeah, we, he just finished. He just, we're gonna go over to the Capitol area and peacefully just let our boys be known. That was like exact phrase I heard from a, a guy over there. Some, I don't remember the name of the guy. I don't think he ever told me the name. But I talked to this guy while I was over there. He, was, uh, he offered me an orange. Just a free fruit, and I've talked to him, and it's like, yeah, Trump just finished. We're gonna go over to the other side and peacefully protest, do what patriots do. And I'm like, all right, I hear you. So okay. the, the rally, the, the big part where Trump was talking, ended, and slowly the mass started to move towards the Capitol. I kind of, I did not go straight that way. I just kind, of, I went closer to the Washington Monument to get a better view, and I walked around the side of it. So even though I was amongst the first ones to leave, I did merge up to a little bit of group that was going on ahead. Halfway there, I stopped because uh, there was this lady she was holding up a clipboard asking for signatures and i she approached me and she's uh there were uh, it's a petition to stop the ccp i talked to her and whatnot and then i carried on my way saw more people talked to some people by the time i got to the front of the the, the capital there were already a couple of people just gathered around the area but the actual bulk of the mass were still on their way up People were waving flags, banners, signs, singing. There was this guy dressed as Uncle Sam going back and forth on a Segway. People were just up just the, the, the street, up the stairs, standing around singing. There was this lady singing, we're not going to take it. The Twisted Sisters, I thought that was pretty cool. There was uh, people waving flags everywhere, singing and whatnot. Okay. There was a little bit of struggle that I noticed as I get closer to the top at the little uh, tunnel. So I had, like I said, I'd never been to the to, to DC, to the Capitol. I wanted to see the building up close. I am not a very tall person, so I just kind of walked a little bit around the crowds. There were a lot of people everywhere, but for the most part, everyone just kind of focused on their things, singing, talking to each other, waving signs, waving flags. I cut through the crowd. I managed to get to the top. I got to like, well, you remember where the scaffolds, scaffolds were, right? That outside the scaffold, there was this one that looked like a little tower, I guess. I guess that was like a media tower, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, I walked past it, went to the scaffold towards the right side, if you're standing in front of them. And I like cut a little bit through it and came up the side where there wasn't really anyone on that side. I thought that would lead me towards the front, but I realized I was wrong. I looked around, there was, like I said, there was a little side door. It was kind of open. There was a guard there. And I had just seen someone walked in. I asked the guy, can we go in? He's like, yeah, it looked like a police officer. He was wearing like a uniform and whatnot. He didn't look very old. He looked like someone young, probably about my age, I guess. He just shrugged. I didn't really go in. I just turned around, went back the other way because I was still trying to find my group. Then I doubled back towards it through the scaffolds. I was hoping if I could get high enough, I could be able to like see amongst the crowd and hopefully pinpoint them. Yeah, I just went back through the scalp and I came up this little stairs, ended up on the side, people were going back and forth. I could see a larger group kind of like pushing together towards the center. I really wasn't sure what's going on, so I just got closer to get a look. Standing off to the side and that's when I realized, oh, they're struggling, they're fighting. I uh, remember seeing like bottles on the floor, a, a, lot, a whole lot of glass bottles, uh, not glass, plastic bottles. There were a couple of glass bottles laying around the floor, like the, the like juice bottles. Uh, forget the name of that brand uh, Snapples I think a lot of those kind of like that just laying around on the floor I saw a knife on the floor uh, like a, it was like a fixed blade okay. it's like the ones that you said the gas stations I guess something like that I'm coming from the sides like the tunnel is here you know there's like this little stair that leading to it and there's like from the sides I'm coming from this side I'm standing here watching everything I moved towards the bottom so I'm standing now looking straight into the tunnel there's people struggling in front of me 
I can see, I'm assuming he must have been a cop, like, leaning around the corner from inside the tunnel, like, spraying people and leaning back inside. You could see him, like, trying to whack people that were trying to push in. I was upset, I will be honest, because I believe that the First Amendment, it's the First Amendment, and it states peacefully assemble. I didn't, I didn't really want anyone to get hurt, because even though I may not necessarily agree with the establishment, I don't think that was the time or the place to act the fool. Of course, I, I, under, I understand where a lot of them may be coming from, the frustration, people being forced into their homes, being locked down for months to no end, police, uh, police uh, enforcing this anti-constitutional edict. I can understand why they would be upset. That being said, in my humble opinion, I don't think that was the time or the place to act that way. So I'm standing there watching everything. I'm a little like flabbergasted. I watch this guy in front of me. I'm not sure if he got hit or got sprayed or what happened. I just see the guy like drop. Instant, I guess, instant kicks in. I try to grab the guy. When I'm trying to pull up the guy, something hits me. I don't know what it was. It just hit me from the side of the head. I never saw what, never saw it, what it was. So. I don't know what it was. I know I fall. I'm trying to get up. I get sprayed in the face and someone pulls me off to the side. I'm sitting on the corner washing my face with some water. This person's giving me some water and just helping me wash my eyes. I just hold it up. I'll pour water and whatnot. I'm now standing back on this on the right side of the tunnel. There's a little bit of struggle going on over there, but at this point I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to it. I'm kind of more focused on the fact that I'm in pain. Now, while I'm on that side, uh, this kid, I really can't say a whole lot about him because he was dressed in all black and was wearing like a, a face mask. Not like the, the, the kind of like the tube ones that you pull up all the, the way up. Gator. Yeah, I guess what they're called. Yeah, I call them the socks because that's what they remind me of. But anyways, he was wearing one of those and a hat, so I really can't say I did see a whole lot of the guy. But he had this piece of something. It looked kind of like wood but it wasn't really wood because when i touched it it was a lot lighter than wood so it was something like some kind of plastic wood i guess and he was using it to try to bang into a break a window this guy's standing there just bashing the window and i'm like hey man what are you doing and this other guy comes up and grabs the thing he's bashing and it's like dude we don't do that this is our house you don't go to your house and break your windows right he takes a stick and just tosses it to the side and the guy just walked away uncalled for Something that happened often in Puerto Rico that I quite criticized. Back when we had this big uh, confrontation, this whole rally in Puerto Rico in 2019 over the, the governor at the time, people were ripping off the, the pieces of the old road and throwing it at the cops. I'm like, you're destroying public property, which to an extent it owns to everyone because it gets paid by tax money. So don't do that. Don't break public stuff. It is a crime to begin with. And like I said earlier, I don't think that was the time or the place to act a fool like they did. Because I doubled back out of the area when it started getting gas hard because I was having a hard time breathing. I made me throw up in a corner because I, I couldn't breathe. I felt congested. Walked back outside. I started talking to this guy. I met another guy over there. He was Puerto Rican as well like me. And while I'm talking to this other guy, yeah, I'm standing out there talking. And I see something push past us. And I'm like, what is that? Like, I don't know. You saw that, right? I'm like, yeah. And then I just get hit on the neck. Because at that point, people were starting to retreat. I'm looking around. I see people starting to walk away. So I walk up to the little wall. And that's where I see the barricade that you mentioned earlier. I see it on the floor tipped over towards the side. I use it to get into the, on top of the little wall and jump down yeah, to the other side. So I jump over and I jump into the grass side. I'm standing around the grass. The cops are, at some point, they went around that concrete. And now they're forming a wall of cops in the grass. And they're shoving people as they go. Yeah, they were advancing, and whoever came close to them, they were, like, shoving that, like, the batons. And they were shoving people off. I'm standing there, heading out of my way, and I looked over my shoulder, and I watched this lady. I hope I don't get the age wrong, and if she's seeing this, I apologize. She's probably, like, mid-50s, maybe. Really nice lady. She's standing around, and she's shouting, what are you, Why are you doing this to us? We are not doing anything. We're being peaceful. She gets shoved, falls to the ground. The cops that shoved her pulls out the bottle of uh, pepper spray, sprays her while she's down, pulls it, puts it away, grabs the baton, and races. At that point, I just kind of run, 
got in between them, got smacked in the back, grabbed her, like, by underneath the arm, and I left her. She's like, I can't see. I can't see. Like, I know. Just hold on to me. I got sprayed later. I got sprayed earlier. Follow me. I got her all the way to the other side of the pond. That's where some other passerby gave us some water. I washed off her face, and I walked with her a couple, like, half a block, maybe a little bit of a block, and then I went off on my own to try to find my way back to the hotel. Most of the people that I saw there were were really nice and, and, and chill people. I spent a good portion of the day. Since I lost my group, I figure I'm kind of an orphan now, so I'm just going to try to talk to everyone, see if I can self-adopt myself into another group so I don't spend the day alone. So I spent a good portion of the day going from group to group, talking to people to people. I talked to people from it was this group of black folks that I talked to. They, were, they had shirts that said Blacks for Trumps. Talked to them for a while. I uh, talked to this group of, of this, uh, she was Chinese and the guy was uh, Venezuelan, I think they were a couple. Talked to them for a while. I uh, met, a, I talked to a Cuban guy while I was over there. So I said something in Spanish, he said something and I looked over and we started talking. I talked to a couple of, uh, the guy he said they were from uh, First Nations, I think that means like native tribes. Yeah. There were a group of, of people, they said, yeah, we're from the First Nations such and such and such and such. I don't remember the tribes. I had a really interesting conversation with a, I think they were Catholic bishops of some sort. Cause they, were, they had like the little neck thing. The only people that were a little sketch in my opinion was the Viking guy in the morning who was, uh, I don't know, he's like, I'm just here doing my thing, man. And whatnot. He just talked a little sketch, weird, but hey man, there's weird people everywhere. Who am I to judge? And then the guy that I mentioned who was dressed as Uncle Sam, because he's the first one, he's like, we just breached the Capitol and we got the, the laptop. His words. It's an older gentleman dressed as Uncle Sam going around on a Segway. You know, I've heard a lot of people say similar things in retrospection when looking back at the, the January 6th event. And actually, I did hear from people over there on the way back up that some people were suspecting that a large percentage of the violent folks were not really who they claim to be or on the side who they claim to be even even while i'm on the ground because uh you remember that i mentioned earlier a guy dressed as uncle sam in a segway uh -huh. so i'm standing off the, the the main building area and this guy comes up to me in a segway he's talking and he says yeah we just breached the capital and i'm like what like yeah we just breached the capital and then one of our guys took Pelosi's laptop. And I'm like, what? Then there's a lady standing next to me. She's like, what are you talking about? Someone reached the door. It's like, yeah, someone got in. And she's like, oh, that's probably Antifa. Well, she did not say Antifa. She said, she said a more, uh, how can I use? Yes, anti f u c k s. Oh, that's the Antifa. I'm acting a fool trying to make us look bad. So even when things are happening on the ground, the idea that it might have been some kind of infiltrated action was present. If I'm being honest, I would say there was a, I would say like a 70, 30 per, uh, ratio, 70, some like people dressing like there were more than ones dressed in, in, in black like that, pushing against the cops. More so like if you, like if you're looking at it, of a ratio because I'm here's the thing mob mentality it's it's a hell of a thing and when you're in the heat of the moment like that it's not very hard to get caught up and do something you do not necessarily want to so I do not doubt I am not saying that the people that were being that were just infiltrators I, I wouldn't be surprised and then it's sad reality but it's the way human brain works there would probably good folks good people that God violent because they saw someone else around them do it and they were just caught in the heat of the moment i'm not saying that that was impossible but from what little bit i saw it looked like most people that were dressed in like black and stuff like that a lot of them had a like, like had vest and and, and and knee pads and whatnot i had knee pads i will i will be straight up and honest i was wearing knee pads myself and underneath this the shirt i was wearing i was wearing one that i used when i was in wrestling it's a little padded because, like I said, I knew it was possible that something like that would happen. So in case I would fall, I would at least have some kind of protection.
Yeah, I saw. I didn't know what it was when I'm coming up. I just saw kids making something. I'm like, okay, more power to them, I suppose. When it's when I'm doubling back, that I see some news, but it's a little news. It's maybe I could have used it because I'm small. Yeah, I mean, I saw it when I was walking past it on my way back to the hotel. I remember I I, I chuckled when I saw it because I didn't know what they were building on my way up. Yeah, I guess it could be functional. I if it was someone that's not very tall. But that being said, it, it was a little news. It's mostly for mock, I guess. It's kind of like how they in the women's march they brought out the gadgetine and they brought out the Trump doll. I don't know if you remember that one. Yeah. And they had a gadgetine. Also, I think that one was an actually functional because I think that was a blade. But I could be wrong. There is one thing, it's more like a personal note, I suppose. When I went there, especially on the way back, I was talking to a lot of people, and a lot of people were disillusioned. Not just by the results of the uh, of the counting, but by the way the police reacted. I, I remember hearing people say things along the lines of, they do not come out like this when Antifa ride on the streets, but when we come out to defend ourselves, they come at us in force. And I think that's a sentiment that's not just echoed with the people that were present there. It can be stretched across the nation to a lot of different situations. Whatever it's happening right now in America, it's 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 a, it's a clear and uh, on partial enforcement of the rules. Where if you are on the left, you might get a slap in the in the wrist. If you're on the right, they're gonna throw the whole Library of Alexandria at you while it's on fire. Both sides of the aisles at this point are basically islands. And there is a deep breach where, where it's really hard to reconcile from one side to another. One side sees the other as the absolute enemy. And then, for example, the, the, those on the left think that those on the right are the, the, the absolute enemy and that they must be exterminated. On the right, that's a, a sentiment that it's growingly being mirrored. And I guess the problem lies in the fact that we do not have a lot of bipartisan, bipartial coverage of the situations. There's a lot of narrative involved when it comes to telling the people what happened in any situation. And people, a lot of people, take for granted what comes to them from TV. Because at the end of the day, most of the folks do not have the time to, to sit down on their own, read the news, read articles and try to sort out what's happening. They're just going to take for face value what's been told to them. Because they're too busy throughout the day working. They expect to be able to come home, sit down, watch whatever news source that they choose and get a concrete, accurate representation of, of the world. But that it's growingly difficult, dare I say, impossible in more situ most scenarios. So I get that's where the disconnect that you mentioned comes from. The fact that people are slowly driving apart from each other and no longer listening to what the other side has to say. Yeah, okay, well, in respects of DC, I've, I've heard a lot of recently about a lot of the people that they still have in prison. Some of them supposedly, allegedly are in a isolated confinement and whatnot. You look at uh, like the DA in Portland who let out like 200 people from the riots. You see... Uh, Places like uh, said California, uh, where they're changing the law now, and if you steal less than amount, you you can be caught free. That sort of thing is what a lot of people on the right are seeing, and they're saying that this is an unfair enforcement of the law. Because you remember when they had the, the I think it was in New York last year when they were doing the rally against the lockdowns, the cops came out against them, but when they did the BLM uh, uh, rallies. The, the governors were walking alongside them. So a lot of people are seeing this sort of things and are wondering, yo, what the F? Another factor that people have to deal with, myself included, it's, uh, it's called confirmation bias. If you expect to hear something and you hear it, you're going to get that little dopamine hit in your brain, so you're going to keep seeking it on the other side of it. If you're the news corporation and you see that people click on this type of news more, then you're going to feed them to them. Because at the end of the day, it's all about money. So, yeah, it is certainly true. And I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. 
And it's something that I often debate myself with. I have, with my roommate, I often have arguments with him. Not like full-on arguments, like exchanging ideas back and forth. And we often, and I often try to put my ideas and my or my opinions into to question and try to to hold them up to the light, to scrutiny. And I guess a lot of people don't do that, and, and it leads to the fact that, like as you were saying, I wouldn't be surprised if news were tailoring, trying to to keep a narrative going, because. Uh, there's a phrase that I like to quote, Lincoln, uh, a house that's divided will not stand in the Gettysburg Address. I might have gotten the wording slightly wrong, but that's kind of how it goes. And if you can keep the people going at each other's throats, it's a lot easier to pull whatever shenanigans you want to pull. I am not saying that that is what's happening, but it's what I would do if I wanted to be able to pull some kind of shenanigans with the power I would try to keep the people going at each other's throats from both sides. Divide and conquer, as the Caesar used to say. I guess the final thing I want to say is that at the end of the day, it's more look beyond what what's happening, what people are saying, and try to see where it goes to what it could lead to. Because I believe America is a great melting pot where people from all cultures and all nations can come together to exchange ideas. I do not believe at all that America is a, a racist country as some of people are presenting. I do not believe this narrative that the news are telling the people that America is crumbling and it's a broken place. I believe that there's a lot more good people than bad people. And if we can focus on that, if we can reach across the aisle, left and right and right and left, to try to pull this nation back together, I think that, that we can do it. We have to, yeah, we cannot ignore events like January 6th, but we have to keep into perspective that at the end of the day things like that have happened throughout our history and will probably continue to happen we, we should not overlook the actions but we also have to understand how we got to that point point. and it boils down to the fact that a, half of the people in the country right now feel like they're not being heard and the other side feels just about the same so I guess it's really a situation that it's, it's a matter of trying to find a compromise of some sort I just don't know if it can be done. I hope it can. I am trying to. I'm hoping that some way, somehow, we can find that happy medium and save the sinking ship, as they say.